Welcome back to another lecture. As always, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me at the end of the presentation. For those that are asking me on YouTube, feel free to join my free community on Discord and ask me questions there as I can easily answer your questions. Whereas in the YouTube comments, I can't really post any screenshots, examples, stuff like that. In this lecture, I will be covering SMT divergence and why it is extremely important to my model and in my opinion, to any ICT strategy. If there was one concept from ICT that I would label the quote unquote holy grail, it would be SMT divergence. So what is SMT divergence? SMT divergence is the acronym for smart money tool. So the long form of SMT divergence is smart money tool divergence. You may hear others say that SMT divergence is a crack in correlation. And essentially what this means is that SMT divergence is a price signature that occurs when correlated markets don't move in tandem with one another. This is significant because it tells us that there is some sort of institutional sponsorship going on in the markets. And so before I dive any deeper into SMT divergence, the prerequisite to spot SMT divergence is to understand basic market structure. So if you don't know much about market structure, make sure that you learn that first. So for example, higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, and lower highs. When using SMT divergence in the right context, you will be able to find trade ideas that immediately run in your favor. And so this is the main reason I love SMT divergence and why it is such a crucial component of my model. SMT is how I find turtle soup setups. And in my opinion, SMT is turtle soups. In my opinion, I'm not 100% sure if this is correct, but from my screen time and experience, it has proven to be true. When looking at correlated markets, they should move in tandem, meaning that when one market makes a new swing point, so should the other. In this diagram, there is no SMT divergence because the markets are moving in sync. When market A on the left makes a higher high or a lower low, Market B on the right also makes a higher high or a lower low. So here's that example of no SMT divergence, right? Where correlated market A is making a higher high, which means market B should also be making a higher high. Therefore, in this diagram, there is no SMT divergence. Vice versa, when correlated market A makes a lower low, Correlated market B should also make a lower low. So in this case, there is no SMT divergence because they both are doing what they're supposed to do. In this slide, I've created a diagram to show what SMT divergence looks like in the markets. So compared to the diagram in the previous slide, we can see that market A on the left makes a higher high or lower low, whereas market B on the right fails to create a new higher high or lower low. When this occurs, this is SMT divergence and is a price signature that indicates some sort of manipulation is occurring. So here on the left, once again, you have correlated market A making a lower low. So we're expecting correlated market B to also make a lower low. But in this case, it makes a higher low, right? Low, high, lower low, low, high, higher low, right? So that cracking correlation is what we call SMT divergence and vice versa. Here we have correlated market A making a new higher high which means market B should be making a new higher high as well. But in this case, it fails to make a higher high. It makes a lower high, right? So this would be SMT divergence. When you get SMT divergence on the lows, this is a bullish signature. So we're looking for bullish price action after this occurs. Whereas if you get SMT on the highs, you are looking for bearish price action as that is a bearish signature. As I mainly trade index futures, I only know a few correlated assets. So for index futures, I refer to NQ, ES, and YM. JXY is also applicable, but I would look at it for longer term correlations. Another use case for DXY that I use personally is if NQ, ES, and YM are not providing immediate feedback, I will refer to the dollar index as well. For Forex, I only analyze EU. So the correlated assets are EU, GU, and DXY. For crypto, it would be Bitcoin and Ethereum. One thing to note is that DXY is inversely correlated. So that means the chart is quote unquote upside down in relation to most assets. 
So here's an example where let's say this chart on the left is EU or NQ and this chart on the right is DXY. So here when EU or NQ makes a higher high on DXY since it's inversely correlated meaning it's upside down we're looking at the lows when we're looking at the highs on EU. So let me reiterate that on EU or NQ for example if we're looking at the highs then on DXY we're looking at the lows as they are inversely correlated. So now getting a bit more in depth of why SMT divergence is so important surrounds the idea that it is the first sign of institutional sponsorship in the markets as trading alongside smart money is the whole premise to ICT. And so with that logic in mind, you will find that SMT divergence occurs at the beginning and end of every trend. Yes, I just said that. Let me repeat it. You will find that SMT divergence occurs at the beginning and end of every trend. So I hope you are able to grasp how significant that is because I basically told you that this concept will spot reversal for you when applied in the right context. This means that SMT divergence will help you find the high or low of X. X being a variable that represents any defined range in time. So for example, X could be the year, the month, the week, the day, the session. So because SMT divergence is able to help you spot reversals of the market, it can also help you spot the high or low of defined ranges in time. Another use case of SMT is that it indicates when accumulation or distribution phases are complete in market maker models. So for those that are having trouble spotting specific phases of a market maker model, you can use SMT divergence to gauge when a phase has been completed. And so not only does SMT indicate the high or low of a defined range in time, but it also indicates that the market is ready to expand. Now that you understand what SMT is, this is how I personally like to apply it. The first thing is to use SMT divergences to spot phases of market maker models and within these phases is where my model resides. When looking for SMT divergence, I am always looking for them to occur within a higher time frame key level. This is also where I've seen the occurrence of stacked SMT divergence, which I haven't heard anyone else talk about, so in a future lecture I'll cover this. Here is a diagram of what I mean when using SMT in confluence of market maker models. Most educators usually teach to look for SMT only at the smart money reversal, but when using SMT, it can also be applied to different phases of the market maker model. By studying this and understanding this, you will be able to identify why explosive price movements occur. And so here I want to explain correlated market A, correlated market B. So here we have a market maker model, right? Market maker buy model. So at every phase in the market, you will find SMT divergence. So let's say you have the original consolidation. This would have been the previous market maker sell model, right? It would have been that previous market maker sell model, smart money reversal. It turns into original consolidation. So here to identify our first distribution phase, we find that SMT divergence and most likely you will have expansion in the market after that occurs. Once that occurs, you're looking for your smart money reversal, SMT divergence once again, right? So market A making lower low, market B fails to make that lower low. Same thing over here with the other phases, SMT divergence on the highs or the distribution phase where market A makes a higher high, market B fails to make the higher high, right? And then in the original consolidation, market B makes a higher high, market A fails to make the higher high, that would be SMT divergence. And so finally, we have the accumulation phase where in market A it makes lower low, taking out that liquidity, and then market B, it fails to take out that low. And so a lot of times people that are only fixated on one market, let's say this is ES right here on the right side and it's NQ on the left side. Well, when people are looking for a liquidity sweep on ES and they don't get it, it's because SMT has occurred within the markets. And then we have the exact same thing here, but in a market maker sell model format. So I just flipped around the charts. Um, this distribution, I usually look at it as accumulation. So I accidentally didn't swap these, but the origin of consolidation accumulation where the distribution is, uh, 
just swap that with accumulation smart running reversal up here and then we have distribution so just swap around the distribution accumulation phases and so with each phase you'll be able to identify with that smt divergence on the highs for bearish price action right and then on the lows for bullish price action so removing some of the lipstick of the market maker model and adding the higher time frame key levels this right here is exactly what I look for in all my trades. So I'll be usually looking at a higher time frame market maker model. And so we look for that higher time frame key level. So let's say this is an hourly market maker buy model. And whenever we look for SMT divergence, we're looking for it to occur within a higher time frame PD array. So in this case, it would be an hourly PD array. And I would drop down to the five minute, look for that SMT divergence, look for lower prices, if that makes sense. And then we have the same thing once again, and vice versa. This is a uh, market maker sell model. And so when I'm looking for um, sells on the right side of the curve, I'm looking for that hourly fair value gap, SMT on the highs within that higher time frame fair value gap or whatever PD array you want to use. And then look for sells going lower into the original consolidation. And so this setup right here is the silver bullet setup that ICT loves so much. Same thing over here on the left side of the curve. This would have been a market maker buy model, right? Before we turn into a market maker sell model. And so this right here, this would be that silver bullet setup for a market maker buy long setup, right? So that would be this right here. Now that you understand what SMT divergence is, I'm going to be showing some trades I took based on SMT divergence as this concept is a crucial part of my model. In these first examples, they are just simply using SMT divergence and market maker models together to trade. And once again, my model is just higher time frame PD array, SMT divergence within it, and then I look for lower time frame structure. And number four would just be that trade management. In this first example, we can see a market maker buy model. And this was annotated live with the Discord. So make sure you check that out if you want to join. So getting into the example, we can see how SMT divergence helps identify the phases of a market maker model. A great way to use SMT divergence as well is not only entries, but also for trailing stop losses. And so here I just want to explain, we have identified the origin of consolidation, the distribution phase with SMT, right? So SMT on the highs here, we had SMT on the highs here, and then we had SMT on the lows here, SMT on the lows here, SMT on the lows here. And so I took a long from down here. And so to trail my stop loss, every time I see an SMT divergence, this is a very general way that you can do it as well. That is very effective in my experience. Um, how I tra trail my stop loss is a little more advanced as I use every PD array to kind of trail and follow order flow. But SMT divergence is a great way to trail your stop loss. So every time I see some sort of accumulation phase, um, in this market maker buy model, for example, if there's SMT divergence, then I'm not afraid to put my stop loss at this low right here, right? This low, because I know that this low should not be taken out since there's SMT divergence that occurred here. And so once again, waiting for price to do whatever it's doing, trades below this low creates that SMT divergence. You can trail your stop loss to this low now, right? And then target that final original consolidation. So here's the second example, and it's exactly the same thing but now it's a market maker sell model right so we have this original consolidation here with smt divergence confirming that the previous market maker buy model had been um that was the smart money reversal for it and so once we create this new smart money reversal this became original consolidation and so here we can see there's a lot of equal lows here perfect for drawn liquidity and we had this retracement accumulation right here smt divergence telling me that this accumulation phase has completed and so once we have this smt divergence we're looking for higher prices right and so on these highs we have smt divergence as well and so that was indicating to me that we were about to have our smart money reversal and right here we have that smart money reversal trade lower get that market structure shift if you're trading that 2022 model right and so right here we trade back into this fair valley gap and something i want to mention is you can have smt divergence with fair valley gaps as well that's also another thing i don't really hear people talking about but i'll just put it out there that this is something i see all the time 
where one market will trade back into a fair value gap, the other market will leave it as a breakaway gap, and then that's SMT divergence in my head. And the reason I would say it's SMT divergence is because if you drop down to a lower time frame, for example, as price is fractal, this fair value gap um, low would be a swing high on a lower time frame. And so right here, we have that SMT divergence distribution. This is where I entered the market right here on this. Uh, it's a balanced price range right here, but I'll just call it a fair value gap. And so we drop lower and then ultimately into that original consolidation, right? And last but not least, here is the third example. And once again, exact same thing, right? Um, this one, I actually had the executions on chart because my previous annotations, those ones I executed on NinjaTrader. So I don't have the annotations for that, but you still get the same idea. And honestly, I, I would say this is the cleanest example I have of using SMT with market maker models. And so this was a trade I took on the 15 second, if I remember correctly. And so here we have, right, once again, original consolidation. We had an SMT prior to this. We have distribution, SMT on the highs right here, right? And then after we had redistribution, another SMT on the highs. Help me confirm that. And so right here, smart money reversal, we had an SMT on the lows. I forgot to, I guess I forgot to annotate it here. Um, SMT on the lows. And on top of that, this occurred right at 9 a.m. Um, if you study quarterly theory, you'll understand the significance of that. But for now, I'm just going to leave that as it is because I'm only talking about SMT divergence in this lecture. And so once we have that smart money reversal, looking for our first accumulation phase. And so once we had this SMT divergence on the lows, that's when I pulled the trigger and I was targeting that first redistribution high. And so once we took that out, I partialed 50% here, get some sort of retracement, trading higher, right? And then once we take that second distribution high, partialed another 25% right there, right? And then right here, we have another SMT divergence. And then from this point on, once we have SMT divergence, I'm expecting these lows not to be taken anymore. And that's why whenever I enter my trades, if it if I am correct, then you will see that my trades quickly go in my favor. The reason is because I'm using SMT divergence to identify which low is the manipulation low. And so right here, the second reaccumulation right here, SMT divergence, you can trail your stop loss up to this low, for example, and we should see expansion higher, which we never revisit this low, right? So we see expansion higher, finally tapping into that original consolidation. And the first tap, I didn't really take profit, but the second one, I was like, all right, it's looking a little suspicious. So I just closed and I didn't actually close at the original consolidation high. I think I closed somewhere in this area right here. Once it tapped into it, traded lower because we didn't get any sort of displacement past that point. Moving on to the next example, I wanted to show you guys how I frame my trades based on a higher time frame market maker model. And if you've watched my previous video on my model, then you would understand that this is exactly what I look for in my majority of my trades. The only difference between this and that video is that I am implementing SMT divergence to confirm the market is ready to expand. This is why by understanding my model extremely well, I know that if my entry is valid, it will go quickly in my favor. So in this example, it is an hourly market maker buy model framed from a daily inefficiency here, right? Market maker buy model. We had SMT prior to this creating that original consolidation, or you could say it's a smart money reversal for the market maker sell model that was occurring on the left side of the curve here, right? We have our original consolidation distribution phase SMT on the highs, right? Confirming that we're ready to go. And you can notice every time I annotate SMT within these phases, you see expansion right away. Once again, here, redistribution, SMT on the highs, expansion right away. So down here, we finally got that smart money reversal, right? SMT divergence on the lows. And so we started to, what, displace higher. So the second wave of SMT divergence, we expand in the market. And so this fair value gap is where I was looking for and operating within. And so this right here was, um, I'd say these setups are generally what I call A plus setups. And then um, in the next segment of examples, I will show you guys a plus 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 setup for my model specifically.
So dropping down to the five minute, this is the price action we were looking at. So this yellow box was that hourly fair value gap. And then that blue box was the accumulation phase. And so in this slide, I have removed the higher time frame annotations and made it a little cleaner. And this is the screenshot of exactly what my model is, right? So here I wanted to mainly highlight the SMT divergence that occurs at the lows here. And so this is where I took my first buy since this was a SMT divergence that I'm looking for within a higher time frame PD array, right? And remember, this is all higher time frame context that makes this possible on the lower time frame is that you need that higher time frame context. I understand we're in a market maker buy model on the higher time frame, right? To go higher. And so this is also where I want to kind of show you guys why SMT divergence, I view it as turtle soup. And so here I'm expecting accumulation, right? This is just a generic accumulation manipulation distribution, right? You can also look at this as a market maker buy model on a smaller scale, but here I'm just going to say it's accumulation manipulation distribution as it's not the cleanest market maker buy model here. And so here, once we had that SMT divergence on the lows with this hourly fair value gap, right? And that was turtle soup. I went on to the 15 second chart from the five minute chart. And I looked for my entry right here. Once I got my entry in here, I was just managing my trade, right? Once you have that SMT, and once again, this is why by understanding my model, if my entry is correct, I should see expansion in my favor right away, right? So SMT, expansion right away. And then once we dig lower into here, I'm looking at this as some sort of accumulation phase. And so once we had another dig below this low, this is another SMT divergence, and you can look at it as another turtle soup right here. And finally, I sold my full position at this high. And this was the clearest drawn liquidity for me personally, um, as this was the five minute chart, right? And I'm executing on the 15 second chart. So this was more than enough for me. And obviously you can always catch more points, right? Last but not least, I wanted to show you guys an extremely high probability setup that is my favorite to trade. And so this is when a higher time frame market maker model has lower time frame market maker models within it. And the previous example, once again, um, is pretty much the same thing as this, but because this trade specifically was so much cleaner, I decided to make a little category for it. So here is the higher time frame market maker model. And once again, in this example is an hourly market maker buy model framed from a daily inefficiency. So here is where's the consolidation. We have our distribution phase here, confirming it with SMT divergence. And then here we have our smart money reversal, confirming it with SMT divergence, right? And then here we have our accumulation phase right here, which when I dive lower, you'll see that it's confirmed with SMT divergence and why I was able to enter this trade. And so I entered my trade within this wick right here. And on the hourly chart, it looks like I caught a wick entry, but as I dive deeper into the time frames, it, you'll realize quickly that this is just, you know, it's fractal price, right? So down here was actually a 2022 ICT model entry on the 15 second and uh, we'll dive right into it. So once again, higher time frame PD array, SMT divergence within it, and then we're looking for lower time frame structure. So what's our lower time frame structure? In this case, it would be the hourly market maker buy model. And then lastly, it's just trade management, right? In this case, I'm not trading the hourly chart. I'm just using it as, once again, higher time frame context. And that's why higher time frame context is extremely important. So here is the accumulation phase zoomed in on the five minute chart as it is the lower time frame relative to the hourly chart, right? So here, once again, this is the accumulation phase. And I'm gonna remove the accumulation box and cleaning up the annotations. We can see that all three things I look for in my model is met. So one, we're looking for higher time frame PD array, two, SMT divergent, three, lower time frame structure, and in this case, the higher time frame PD array would be that hourly fair value gap. And within this fair value gap, there was SMT divergence on the lows as well. This SMT divergence occurred with YM. And lastly, as price is fractal, this was also another market maker buy model on a smaller time frame. So even on the five minute here, you can already see there's your original consolidation up here, your distribution phase right here. 
smart money reversals down here with that SM uh, smart money reversal, right? SMT divergence. And then we have our accumulation phase right here, reaccumulation right here, and then that final run to that original consolidation, right? Unfortunately, the replay feature doesn't allow me to go to the 15 second chart for my entry, but essentially what I used to confirm the entry was a 15 second 2022 ICT model, as I mentioned a little earlier. In this slide, you are looking at the one minute chart. And so once again, you're looking at a market maker buy model, right? So it's a market maker buy model within a market maker buy model. So here we have our origin consolidation with the SMT on the highs, distribution, SMT on the highs, smart money reversal, SMT on the lows over here within a higher time frame Peter Ray, which would be that five minute fair value gap. And then here, accumulation phase one, SMT on the lows, reaccumulation, and then this final SMT right here tells me that we're ready to expand. And so once again, pay attention to these, um, pay attention to these uh, SMT divergences. Once we have this SMT on the highs, expansion, right? SMT on the highs, expansion lower. This case, I guess it would be um, an exception as it did chop around a little bit before it happened, but generally it does happen. So here's smart money reversal, SMT, what happens? Expansion. SMT divergence on these lows, what happens? Expansion, right? And then finally here, SMT divergence, what do we get? Expansion to that original consolidation high. And so I entered within this area right here. If we zoom in a little bit, um, I can't really zoom in here, but you can see this up close candle right here on the 15 second chart. It creates that fair value gap market structure shift, whatever you want to call it. And it was that 2022 model entry. And that's why on the higher time frame, such as the five minute or the one hour chart, it looks like I entered within the wick. Yes, I entered on the wick of the five minute candle and the hourly candle, but on the 15 second candle, I had plenty of confirmation before entering. So whenever you see me executing on those seconds charts, it's, I really did my homework from monthly chart, to daily chart, to hourly chart, to five minute chart, to 15 second chart, right? You need all of that context to make it valid. Otherwise you're just going to be chopping yourself up on the 15 second chart or five second chart all day. And so that brings me to the conclusion of the lecture covering SMT divergence. I hope you all found this insightful. And once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the discord as I don't really respond to questions in the comments because it's a little harder for me to do that. Another thing I would like to ask of you guys is to subscribe for any upcoming con content. And as always, have a great day.